to have you back. Nigerian airline operator Airpeace is currently caught in a web of global politics as it tries to expand its fleet. Just like some of its contemporaries in the aviation industry, Airpeace had ordered for Boeing's 737 MAX before the Lion Air and Ethiopian Airlines' deadly crashes which killed many people. Uh, joining me in the studio to discuss this and more is the CEO of Airpeace, Alan Oyema. It's good to have you with us and good morning. Good morning. All right. Now, we learned Airpeace is starting international flight operations. How prepared are you? Well, uh, first and foremost, we thank God Almighty for everything, and um, we are very prepared. Uh, despite all the huge odds that are stacked against us on the international political arena, aviation arena, mm -hmm. we are very prepared. We are not scared of anything. And uh, we are starting with uh, Sharjah and Dubai, the United Arab, Arab Emirates, uh, come July 5th. We shall be deploying our Boeing 777. Such operations, so we are ready, and uh, we are ready to make a difference. We want to give Nigerians what they've been lacking. You see, it's unfortunate that Nigerians have been paying through their noses over the years for international flight operations. A six-hour flight to Europe costs more than a nine-hour flight from Johannesburg to Europe. So. All the foreign airlines are making a feast out of Nigerians. And over time, most of them would never, ever want any Nigerian airline to succeed. Unfortunately, they get support also in doing that. But here we are trying to help our nation. We are the ones creating the jobs. The foreign airlines put together in the last 60 years, the kind of jobs they've created in Nigeria in 60 years put together is not, not anything near what APIS has created in the last, let's say, in our first year of operation. Not to talk of now that we've created about 3,000 direct jobs in APIS and over 9,000 ancillary jobs in the economy, besides acting as a catalyst for the development of our economy in Nigeria. Yes, we pride ourselves with that because we do about 110 flights daily, and that is a huge one. So we are moving the economy of this country. We are supporting the government uh, to make sure jobs are created. So the best way to do is for Nigerians to support us, both the government and people of Nigeria to support us. We are starting Dubai with just 180,000 Naira for economic class, three uh, luggage, I mean allowance of 23, and of course 650 for business class and 850 for first class. It has never happened like that before. And we are ready to move Nigerians from anywhere you are, you are in this country. We take you to Sharjah and Dubai. For example, we have Kano, Dubai. We have Potako, Dubai. We have uh, Owere, Enugu, Dubai. So what that means is that if you buy our ticket from Kano or from Enugu or from any destination you find yourself in Nigeria, we move you from that place with our local flights, bring you to Lagos, take you from the foot of the aircraft with your luggage, you don't pay mm. for your transportation to the international airport. We put you in an air-conditioned vehicle, take you to the international airport, international airport in Lagos, and uh, move you to your destination in UAE. And when we get over there, there are both services for economy and limousines for first class and uh, business class. So something different that no airline will ever offer you in Nigeria is the fact that we are going to move you from your destination, Abuja, or where, anywhere mm. in the country you are. We bring you to Lagos, seamlessly fly you abroad, bring you back, same way you're not going to miss any flight because our local flights are waiting for you. We know those who are going where. So we've already streamlined our flights to okay. you know, connect to our connecting flights all over the country. No airline in the world will give you this because they don't have our connectivity. All right. That is the difference at a little cost. So instead of paying APIS 80000 for return, over 80,000 for return flight on economy, assuming you're flying from Abuja or from Owera or from Enugu or from Potakot or from Yola, you're paying just 80,000. That is 15,000 each way. And you're not paying anybody any um, transport from the local airport to the international airport. Yeah. We check you in, we do everything for you. So we are giving Nigerians what uh, they've never had before. We are very ready, we are very ready. And we know we are going to face stringent ramp checks abroad. Yeah. 
in order to discourage us. Very good. Uh, it's interesting and heartwarming to know that at least uh, uh, domestic airline can give the foreign airlines a run for their money, just like you said. Now, how would you be able to face competition for foreign carriers that have dominated uh, these routes for a long time now? They've been able to dominate the routes for a long time because of our inadequacies. And uh, here you blame both the airlines, you blame even government policies too. The airlines have not left at all. When you are not, when you are ill-prepared to go into um, this kind of confrontation, I call it confrontation because <laughs> it's just what it is. All right. So w when you are ill-prepared, you get what you deserve. You cannot do international flight operations with one aircraft. Okay. What happens if that aircraft goes tech? You disappoint passengers. You end up being run down by the competition. Indeed. That is why APC, we took our time. I thank the fragment of uh, President Buhari for giving us the designations they gave us. Mm -hmm. When we got our designations, we went into the market, we started buying aircraft. We bought four Boeing 777. We gave this country its first ever 777, registered 5 November, that's registered in Nigeria. While we are we acquiring these planes, some people went to the market and started criticizing us. Some people who call themselves aviation experts, who were actually advertising their monumental ignorance, said that our buying aircraft and keeping at the international airport was tantamount to money laundering. And these were the people, the press, give leverage to talk rubbish most times. They forgot that when your country gives you uh, Designation okay. for me to fly to certain places abroad. It is not automatic. Those countries will also have to permit you to come in. These days, you must show them the aircraft you're going to use. The aircraft must be registered in your name. Mm -hmm. Is either registered as a lease or you outrightly purchase them. Or okay. unlike before, all you need to say, oh, I would like to use 777, oh, I would like to use Airbus, and you are allowed to come in. No. This time, you must provide the tail number, the registration. So that means you must buy or dry lease. If you dry lease, nobody wants to dry lease aircraft to Nigeria because we are like blacklisted. Okay. So APIS went prepared. When we got our first triple seven, people were saying, why are they not flying? They were talking from a position of ignorance because you cannot fly with one aircraft. When we got the second one, oh, why is he not flying? Why should I fly with two aircraft? If I get there, those two could go down. They could go take in one day. What do you do? You disappoint passengers. So APIS is prepared for this competition because we have the capacity. We have the equipment. Very good. Now, we know that Nigerian airlines don't do well on international operations uh, over time. Do you think your airline can actually break that jinx? Yes. And I'm very certain about that. And how? That we're going to break that jinx. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, I owe everything to God Almighty. I don't have apologies if people say, why God, why God? Yes, I owe, whatever is happening around that piece, God is in charge, God is in control. So I owe everything to God Almighty. That is one, and principally two. The second one is that because we are prepared, we've put everything in place. We have one of the best cockpit crew the world can ever have. Our pilots are one of the best in the world. Let me tell you, so many foreign pilots who have flown 27 years, 30 years, 25 years for bigger airlines mm -hmm. in this world. They've come to APIS and failed our stringent cockpit crew test. So we are prepared. When it comes to safety, we don't joke with it. We had sourced our maintenance to a British company right from 2014 when we started. So we maintain our planes in the best places you can think of. Yeah. The next thing is customer service. We have employed staff particularly for these international operations. We are going to change the dynamics, but the only thing we need okay. is our government support and the support of the Nigerian flying public to trust in us, to trust in us. We must begin, we are talking about insecurity. Okay. If you are here today working, if you have job, will you go and join uh, Boko Haram? Will you go and join militancy of any kind? No. So everybody in this country should start thinking of how to, you know, uh, create massive job opportunities for people in the system. If we have the support of the government, which 
think the government will support us. And we have the support of the Nigerian public trusting in us. Yeah. We are going to go places. And we are going direct. Nigeria has a population. We are doing direct flights. They don't have to uh, interconnect from one other country mm -hmm. or the other. We are going mm -hmm. direct. And they are giving them affordable prices. And one thing is certain. For those who are waiting for us to fail, I tell them they have a long time to wait. And they wait forever. Because whenever we go into anything, we are going into it for the long haul. It doesn't matter if we carry two passengers on our first day. It doesn't matter if we carry only 10 passengers yeah. for the next six months. Consistency, we're going to be there. Very good. Now, recently there have been a controversy involving Air Peace and Accident Investigation Bureau over hard landing. Uh, last Saturday, your flight skidded off the runway at Port Harcourt uh, Airport due to flood. Do you assure Nigerians that domestic flight operations are safe with your airline? Of course. Let, let us look at those uh, incidences. We are very safe. This is an airline that does almost about 100 flights every day. You don't compare us to people who do 10, 5, 15. We do about 110. But that is not even the reason. Those things that you call accidents are not accidents. That the oxygen mask deployed because of changing cabin pressure didn't call for the kind of noise that was being made in the media. It didn't call for it. Check out all the airlines, the major airlines, I'm not even talking of African Airlines, all the major airlines in this world, some of them have had about eight of those issues within one year. In five years, we had one uh, accident, uh, four years, we had one uh, incidence of uh, mask deploying. Okay. And why did mask deploy? Once they are changing cabin pressure, mm. it deploys. It does not call for the noise that was being made. Okay. Because all the pilots need to do is to come down. You can fly around the world. You can land that plane and still take off with it and go anywhere you want to go. Okay. All you need to do is to fly low. You fly about 10,000 or below. You will be burning fuel. That's the only thing. If you have money to buy fuel, mm -hmm. you can go from here to New York with that plane. So it didn't call for the kind of demarketing we got from a government agency. It was unprecedented because the work of the AIB actually is not to apportion blame. It's in the act. It's to investigate an incident or accident and, again, give recommendations either to the regulator or to the manufacturer of the aircraft or to the operator and say, next time, do it this way. It is never for punitive purposes. So assuming we even did anything wrong, the route they took was very, very wrong. All right. But I don't want to go, it, it has been overheated in the, in okay. the polity, but the truth is All right. we never concealed anything. How could you accuse us of concealing fair, fair. when we had hard landing, we reported to NCA, who is our regulator. We reported to Boeing, All right. who is the manufacturer. All right. So where is the... Good to have you back on a global business report. And I have here with me Alan Onyema talking about uh, air peace operations in Nigeria and aviation uh, uh, airline there. So we're talking about uh, the hard landing earlier on with the air peace uh, incidents. And you were making your thoughts known. Yeah, like I said before, the, the hard landing thing is not... Uh, uncommon right. in aviation. The pilot was coming in to land, just like rooftop mm. to touch down. There was a sudden war wind. Okay. And heavens broke loose. It was raining graciously. People should understand that he has been given the access to land, okay. you know, to come in and land. As he was about to land, the wind was so much that he was even taking them off course. Yeah. That pilot should be I mean, praise for what so, he did. So it was basically weather-related. Yeah, weather-related. Yeah. So he came in and it was raining. Mm -hmm. When it's raining, we call it positive landing. Okay. You know, sometimes when you land, passengers will be clapping for you. Of course. All those creeding kind of uh, landing that you just land like mm -hmm. a feather. Yeah. You don't do that during rain. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you skid. A three-point So landed. what <laughs> he did was positive landing. Yeah. But because he had been taken off course, yeah. he came in and forced it down deliberately. It was not something that uh, maybe wanted to okay. have an accident or whatever. He mm -hmm. did it deliberately. He positively hit the plane in order okay. to have a faint grip okay. and reported immediately that, look, I have a hard landing. Right. So when you have hard landing, you report to the manufacturer, report to the regulator, we did all that. And even Boeing has written to APIS telling us the inspections to be carried out on the aircraft okay. before you use it. And we packed it immediately. Okay. We have zero tolerance for unsafe practices. Very good. Very good. Now, now let's look at the... Uh, other problems that airlines have tried to compete on international routes, such as Eric, uh, Medfew, usually they fly empty. 
What will you do differently here? Let me tell you something, why those airlines uh, maybe may have failed. Mm. And they only failed on one route. That is the Dubai route. Okay. When, they were, when they were doing London, they were getting considerable uh, market. But you see, the American airlines, the airlines in America, they have complained about the antiques and the, the way the Gulf Airlines do their business. These are airlines being run with state funds. And they are not competing fairly. Okay. They are bringing what we call unfair competition. The airlines in America complain to their government that if we allow these people, if we designate them into every city in America, we are going to run us out, and we are the ones creating the jobs. Okay. Their government hacking to their cry and hit the Gulf Airlines. That's why some of them started selling their planes and started withdrawing. Here we are. Why were they able to run out Arik? They ran out uh, Virgin Nigeria. They ran out Medview. Not because those mm. airlines didn't okay. know what they were doing, right. but because they couldn't withstand. For example, we wanted. We, okay. we are now about to start. Okay. Some airlines are offering hotel to even economy. Tell me where that is done. They're offering hotel. They're offering all, right. all sorts of largest, and they even want to do a third flight. They have two flights already, two frequencies in Lagos, morning and evening, one from Abuja. Now, in order to kill APIs, we are hearing that an airline wants to start another third one. So if our government, our government allows that, APIs will surely run out in the next one week. All right. Because what they are doing there is not because they are going to get enough passengers, but to make sure that All even right. the little ones remain in their mop top. Right. So that they will leave APIs okay. nowhere. We All don't right. have anything to do. All right. On, on that note, uh, Mr. Alan Onyema, uh, CEO of AFP's airline, would like to thank you for your thoughts on those issues. Good to have you with us. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.